You've seen them at their best. You love their movies. But have you seen them at their worst? Not all good directors stay that way. Today on The Nerdening, we're going to look at When Good Directors Go Bad. Hello everybody, I'm Olav. I'm Outlander. And welcome back to The Nerd Meme. So today we're going to be talking about when good directors go bad. Oh, and it happens. It happens. It happens a lot, really. Um, I suppose the biggest, the, the biggest and most obvious one very much is George Lucas. Man, there was so much hope for that too. <laughs> when the new trilogy came out, we had... A renewed hope, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I just did that. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and and what happened? Because I liked THX 1138 when he was a young director. Yeah. Um, American Graffiti was a, a surprise hit and a surprise masterpiece, mm -hmm. really. And A New Hope, you yeah, know, the original Star Wars. That was well, you know, you know, yeah, you know what happened yeah. there. Now, here's the interesting part with George Lucas in particular is a lot of people say, but he had so many good movies. He was involved in so many good movies. Uh, he didn't direct them. He did not direct them. Um, he, did, he did some production, but his director list, yeah, his check it out. It's pretty short, actually. Production, writing, stuff like that. Yeah, he did a lot of stuff. But his yeah. director's list, as far as actual movies, contains six. Six movies that he has directed. That's THX 1138, mm -hmm. uh, American, American Graffiti. Graffiti, Star Wars New Hope. Then he took a 22-year break. And just rode the wave. Yeah, but, well, he was, he was producing, he was writing, he yeah. was doing a lot of things other than directing. But then, 22 years later, he got back in the directing chair for the Star Wars prequels. Mm -hmm. And those just, those... By that point, he really was too big. He nobody was nobody was going to say no to the man. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to be the thing that happens when somebody gets so far up is they get surrounded by yes men. You know, lots of people are like, "Oh yeah, this is a great idea. We'll totally do that. It, it, it'll totally work. We'll make it work." Kind of thing. Well, interestingly enough, it doesn't even have to be they ha they don't even have to be so big and so well known and and climb the ranks. They just have to hit that one mark where. You are a visionary. You are great. Like if the, uh, uh, I can't remember who directed The Raid, but, uh, uh, you know, The Raid was awesome Indonesian film, uh, uh, awesome martial arts action film. It really set the bar. And so if, if it just that, if that was his first directorial debut and then every, you know, everybody who loved the movie surrounded him, he could do anything and yeah. it could be good. It could be crap. A, a good example of, of you know hitting hitting their stride early uh, would have to be the Wachowski siblings. Yeah, yeah. I mean the Wachowskis. Um, what was well was the, was the Matrix their first? Was that their directorial debut? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah, it was it? They started off with the Matrix. It was very well received. It was very well done. It was very. It was really kind of it was a, a, a shakeup of the standard uh, sci-fi films. Yeah, not the first film that had bullet time in it though. That was Wing Commander movie. Uh, we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't. We don't. No. We don't. Uh, but you no, know, and so you know, the Matrix was great. By Matrix, by the second Matrix, they were kind of they were almost in that. Here's a ton of money. Do what you want. You guys did great on your own last time. Just and it, make us more money. And it, it it wasn't bad, but it really wasn't good either. It was yeah. kind of one of those. It was like and how you what was it a twelve minute car chase scene? Something like that. Yeah, and it was just kind of like well, hard to you know. And that was kind of the that was the set piece of the film, and then everything else about the film seemed kind of secondary to that moment in the story and in the action and everything else. Uh, 
I it just it, it it was it was disjointed. It didn't quite work, you know, as well as I think they thought it was going to work. Well, I think that was when he yeah he met the architect, and that was just. It was already kind of weird, and yeah. then you say, "Well, you're not the you're not the one. You're a one. You're the sixth one." Yeah. Okay. And the whole in the, the 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 end. Now, I will say the ending of that one was just pregnant with possibilities. Mm. When he stops the Sentinels in the real world, it's like, "Whoa, wait a second. Are we?" It, it, is is the Matrix really? Uh, d- did they nest the Matrix in another Matrix? There's there's some theories on that. I don't think we can go into this and that time. Would, but yeah. and that would have been that would have been a really interesting. And wait a second, is he going to be the first one to realize that he his powers work here and break through the second layer and really free? You yeah, know, Morpheus, he, who thinks he's free, and all these people who think they're free aren't. And it's like, well, th- I, I'm going to be the one to really break them free. Yeah, I've, I've heard recently that uh, I guess they're trying to get together to make another Matrix movie, maybe even another Matrix trilogy. And oh. I think I think the answer, given on the theories that I've read, the answer to that question would be in those movies. But that would I, be, that's film that theory. Would that's be a nice. whole different film yeah. theory. That's a whole different film theory. That would be nice. But then you get to the third one where... It's still called the Matrix, even though, what we get one one or two scenes in the Matrix. Yeah, because it was like uh, by the po- by the time Zion. they get it, yeah, by the time they actually get into the Matrix again, it's Agent Smith has taken over and yeah. Well, it's still you. Know, it, it, I mean, you're not going to call it the Zion. You know, I, it made sense for it to be the Matrix because it's part of a trilogy and everything. So, uh, but yeah, it was, I'm not going to whinge on that too much. Now, one of the things I will say, uh, I'll, I'll harken back to last week really quickly as far as the as far as the the ending of the Matrix and well, you know, who was Neil really the one he the took artistic o- you direction? Know, um, technically speaking, the you know, with mathematics, a Matrix is, you know, a group of numbers that associate with, you know, w- with, you know, with everything else, basically. And you solve a matrix when you have a one equals one ratio. Yeah. So technically, Agent Smith was just as much the one as Neo was. Yeah. And it wasn't until they interacted that it balanced everything out. Which it, makes everything that you actually really makes one sense in that one. universe, you know. Yeah, another uh, 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 another one that starts off. Well, the way the the, the way the way the the Wachowskis went bad. Oh like, yeah, like Ju- yeah. Jupiter ascending uh, in a lot of ways was virtually the Matrix again, uh, oh. just with a, a more space medieval feel to it. You know, more space feudalism. Yeah. Instead of computer well, feudalism. Even before that, Speed Racer. A lot of people don't realize that they directed Speed Racer. Yeah, I heard good be, and bad things. You, you, you want to piss? You want to piss off somebody? Get, make make a live action version of a cartoon of an anime, no less. Yeah, with and, lots of manga and, and and generations of of love for it. And I don't know that. And you know, I don't think that anybody making a live action film of that could have appeased all the fans. No, but. You know that's, but they were working from source material there, and in Jupiter Ascending, they wrote all of that. You yeah, know, that wasn't like a pre-existing sci-fi or anything. Yeah, and I like the idea of there being several different races of creatures and stuff like that. That's cool. Well, that's that's pretty much standard you know, in, sci-fi. In, yeah. Intergalactic, intergalactic uh, uh, imperialism. Stuff like that, or the idea that you know certain families in other parts of the galaxy, or the the universe own other planets like you know, like there's a title for earth <laughs> and somebody i like it makes me oh man at that point that that would actually explain why there have never been aliens visiting earth but nobody likes it when the landlord shows up they're going to complain about this that and oh what did you guys do to the we had beautiful oceans before you guys moved in. What the hell? Yeah, before you evolved. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at Speed Racer, 
kind of brings us to the next, you know, the 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 breakout director that really went bad fairly quickly. Mm. <laughs> and that's uh, M. Night Shyamalan. We warned you last time that he was going to make an appearance today. Yeah, and here he is. I don't know, like, I think... I think it takes a special kind of person, and maybe I'm that person, to enjoy some of his more reviled films. I might be that person. Well, but and it's I not... understand why 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 people didn't like some of those films, like Lady in the Water. And the happening the happening was just it was a weak story. I thought that you know it, like, it certainly was a weak story. Oh, the trees. You know, yeah, but it, what I thought the story was about was more, you know, the reason I find any enjoyment in that film was M. Night Shyamalan's director, you know, filmography, cinematography style that he brought to filming this very weak story. What? You know, uh, and, and that's what I enjoyed about it. But yeah, the story was weak and lame as hell. No. And if I got to look at Mark Wahlberg making a dumb face one more time. What? I, they're making another Transformers. What? No. He did great with the sixth sense. That was Oh yeah. That was one of those That was suspense. There were there were so many hints and so many clues throughout it, and then it was just kind of a oh, and in case you didn't realize it, this is really gonna blow your ass in mind. <laughs> with the twist. <laughs> and then he did Unbreakable, which we talked about last week, which I mean it what audiences didn't want didn't expect that or want that from a superhero movie. But and I then think... he went to Signs, which was just so different from what he had done before. Uh, one of the first things, so one of the, the positive things people had to say about Signs was that uh, it was a, a great twist on an alien invasion film. And if you're not <laughs> going to film the alien invasion from the front lines of combat and stuff like that, uh, like War of the Worlds, you know, if, if you're not going to film it that way, then you have to have that... That, that that character building and that I close story and those very few characters. Yeah, but I don't think really... I don't think the oh the well no not even the the almost literal the literal God made me kill your wife so you could fend off the aliens. Yeah, it's not quite said in so many words, but yeah. Well, th the fact that. Shyamalan, I think, wasn't he the one that played the guy that yeah, had he killed him the, the wife? Yeah. So it's like, literally, he wrote in, you know, he, he, he literally wrote it, I killed your wife because God wanted you to fend off aliens. That's a weak motherfucking twist. That is a weak twist. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, the execution of the rest of the film was, was, fine, but that wasn't the last film we got from M. Night Shyamalan. Then Devil no. came out, and I... Okay, I hated Devil. Yeah, that was... Like, I understand the concept, but I hated Devil. I, I mean, at least up to this point, he kept giving you clues as to what was what the, the, the end result was. He, he really kind of gave you clues. Well, there, there were clues in Devil, too, but not as many. There were, there were clues, and then there were red herrings, and then there was... There, there was a clue that's a clue to the wrong conclusion, and it's like you're throwing so much at us, we don't know what you, to think. That's not a twist. That's that's like throwing darts at the board. That's that's flat out lying. I mean, the characters flat out lied at one point, and there was no indication whether they were telling the truth or not, or who it was, or I, 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 I the can... devil's close because of because a, a piece of bread lands jelly side down. What the fuck? That's not even. That's just stupid. <laughs> that's physics. That's why. That, that's why the butter side. The butter side is the heavier side. That's yeah. why it lands down. If it rotates, it's probably good. Yeah. If it if it doesn't fall just straight down and it's perfectly weighted, it's probably gonna tip. They were. That was supposed to be the uh, first of a series of films about it. Which yeah. I, and then of course there's the village. The Again. village. The village. I enjoyed the story, and I laughed. I with uh, with the twist at the that's end. The thing. I laughed because I knew it was the director laughing at the audience. Yeah, the whole I was gonna time. say that's the thing is you. I laughed picked that at up, it. and I was like, ah. Oh. You laughed at it, but it wasn't a comedy. Yeah. For, so for me, so it, it like, wasn't the oh. It was the oh no, he didn't. So it's not <laughs> a good movie because it wasn't what. It, it it didn't achieve its goal. All right, I was, it was uh, laughing it was out an, loud in the theater. It was an entertaining movie because it was inadvertently a freaking comedy. 
Oh, but what else do we got here? So, uh, Oh, man. We could go on for days. I mean, of course, what brought us back to M. Night Shyamalan was uh, The Last Airbender. Uh, we, yeah, and that's just... Somebody, maybe he was just surrounded by so many yes men and not enough actual fans or original writers of the show that yeah. we, we got the last airbender. Yeah. It tasted like a fart in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> like, even in, so I've done martial arts, and there's that scene where, where uh, 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 Ong is uh, practicing a, a form with the little girl or whatever, and... They're not even mimicking each other's movements like you're supposed to do when you're training. She's doing something different than him. Yeah, but hey, the end result is the same? I, Shyamalan, you did not see that? You didn't... Your kids do Taekwondo or something? Did you not notice that, Mark? Yeah. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with some more. And we're back. So, um... Who else we got? Giving a pat, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give M Night Shyamalan a rest because dear gods, we could do we, an entire episode. We, we could keep going, on but I, um, I on on that, I am hopeful for his newest movie coming out. We'll that's see. a good point. He is one of those. He is he is somebody who he went bad and he went bad for a while. Um, you want you want evidence of just how bad he is? He left his name off the off the opening credits of After Earth. Yeah, so here's here's he hoping he co-wrote and directed after. Yeah, here's here's hoping that Split is a return to his roots. Yeah, the, his new one. I've seen the trailer finally, and it does look interesting. It looks like it could mm. be. It looks like it could be coming back to what he was. And actually, that's one that I want to bring up is Tim Burton. Okay, he did he he did great with Edward Scissorhands. He did great with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, he's done dark uh, and light films. Big Fish was yeah. great. Um, Big Fish was it, it, it was one of those. Mm, it, it was it was decent. It wasn't really great. It was an interesting film. I liked it personally, yeah, but but it wasn't specifically dark either. Well, it wasn't dark. It wasn't specifically good. It left a lot. It, it, there was a lot left mm. open for it that just there was no there was no real closure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, and he did Batman. Then he did Batman Returns. I and you want to you want to you want a really good example of 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 a breaking point. Batman and Batman Returns. No, there was a lot. The of The Penguin is supposed to be the gentleman, the the, the gentleman type. Yeah, not he, this disgusting. He took some liberties freak. with that. He took some liberties with that. Um, um but. And then, you know, and then he got into the whole Johnny Depp thing and and started really focusing on remakes. He started doing a lot of remakes. Um, so... Uh, and, yeah, it was... It, the, uh, the remakes kind of were his downfall. Yeah. Yeah, The Planet of the Apes, Alice in Wonderland, uh, uh, Lone Ranger. Uh, yeah, it... it just really kind of his, well, he didn't direct Lone Ranger, but still, his remakes were really kind of just yeah, just kind of you know, it's like okay, well, take it, we're gonna make it a weirder story, we're gonna throw in Johnny Depp, and we're gonna call it a day. All right, how pass, much? Pass me the bottle, you know. How much CGI can you cram into that fucker? Uh, and 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 how far from the actual story can we get? Yeah, Alice in Wonderland's. Well, she's not. She th there's numerous been numerous Alice's that they've pulled in. So she's you know it's it's she's not one of many. Then uh, adventures. Well, she's not really adventuring. She's kind of stumbling, and un and I can and still Wonderland. Be an adventure. And Wonderland. Oh, when you were here the first time, you insisted on calling it Wonderland instead of its real name, Underland. And it's like, well, shit. Most of the title's wrong. She's just kind of there and not really invested in anything. So it's not really an adventure because an uh, adventure gets you, excites you. It, it it brings out some emotion and she just kind of stumbles through it. But he's one that, uh, his next, his newest trailer does look very interesting. The Tim Burton? Yeah. Which, uh... uh it's... I don't remember the name of it, but the, the, the story behind it, the idea behind it is that 
There's this orphanage for like weird kids. Oh, uh, with uh, what's her name from Penny Dreadful in it? Yeah, uh, I, I think yeah. I why don't we research this stuff more before filming? <laughs> but, well, actually, I just saw it earlier today. That's the thing. I just saw it earlier today on. I was watching another video somebody had done, and I'm like, wait, Tim Burton has a new one coming out. And the one thing I remember is there's like this little girl that picks up like a turkey leg and has this huge like. You know this this huge like shark mouth behind her. She just devours all the meat off of the bone in like a few seconds, <laughs> and it's like, okay, it looks like he's getting back to what he was originally doing, doing darker films, mm. original films, without a you know without a set person in the cast. I'm just gonna hit the button, Spielberg. Okay. Oh, yes. Spielberg. <laughs> oh. The man who brought us E.T. and then brought us A.I. The man who brought us Raiders of the Lost Ark and then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And apparently they're making a fifth one. Well, he he originally had five planned out. Mm. Uh, and his son asked where the, the last two were. So that's what prompted him to continue to, to finish skull. out the, the five. Okay. Uh, the thing about, no, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Kubrick already working on AI? Like, almost already filming? Kubrick had written, I think Stanley Kubrick, uh, wrote AI. Okay. And this is one of the things that Steven Spielberg tries to use to defend the ending of AI. Is that, well, this is what Kubrick wrote. I'm doing, you know, this was this was my way of honoring him was to make this and do this. Except for then he goes on to say, even if Stanley hadn't written it, I would have ended it this way anyway. So you you can't use Kubrick as a pariah. Yeah, it's like you that can't That was your directorial choice. Yeah, okay. So so those people are saying, "Well, why didn't you just do Stanley Kubrick's idea?" Yes, you did Stanley Kubrick's idea. But you would have done this even if Stanley hadn't written it? You you can't say, well, look, I did what he wanted me to do. But even if he didn't write it, I would have done this. And it's like, yeah, you're all blame goes to you then. You're taking liberties there, man. <laughs> but yeah, he's one that just really just kind of... He kind of hit and miss, hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss. Um, well, and even, well, all of his... In, in, in a way, technically, they all hit. They just didn't all hit the mark. Well, no, they you didn't. Know, well, Crystal Skull was it was it was all the way out on the third ring, you know. It was, it was and that's one of those things where it's like, no, yeah, that was really a failure. To I mean, looking at that compared to particularly compared to the previous his previous work of Indiana Jones. Hmm. Most people will rank them as uh, Raiders is great, Last Crusade is great, Temple of Doom is kind of out there and weird, and now it's, you know, Kingdom of the Crystal, Crystal Skull. At the bottom of the pile. Hopefully Spielberg looks at it and says, okay, I need to get back in the same headspace as The Last Crusade. I need to get back into that, that, that original, that, that original trilogy headspace and do that. And I think this one probably is going to be more, is going to be uh, feature Christian, Christian, a Christian artifact again. Because yeah. again, look at it the way they do it. The Ark of the Covenant. Or if non wants... Then the second one was non-Christian. Then the third one was the Grail. The fourth one was non-Christian. If he wants to throw a weird, if he wants to throw a weird twist into it, make it a Muslim artifact. Nope. He, he probably wouldn't do that, but... No, it, it's it's not something that would be of interest to an archaeologist. Well, a Muslim in... artifact that somehow connects all well, three of the Abrahamic religions or something like that. But would the, is that something that an American archaeologist would be looking for in the 50s? Or the 60s? Ooh. No, I can tell you what it will be. If it's, if it's, a, if it's a religious artifact again, I have a feeling I know what it's going to be. It's going to be the Spear of Destiny. The spear that the spear that, that stabbed Christ. Stabbed Christ. Yeah. It's it it, that, it that kind of be, really completes everything. Yeah, that would be totally back to those roots and everything. So yeah, there's that. Um, got the director that I was really hoping for. You know, I watched him as a teenager. Uh, uh, Greg Araki. 
He did the uh, Teen Angst trilogy, uh, and uh, the first movie was totally effed up. Uh, the second movie was Doom Generation with Rose McGowan, and then the third movie in the in the trilogy was uh, Nowhere, with also with Rose McGowan. She had a bit part in that one, but uh, it was uh, uh, the the Nowhere was uh, lauded as uh, Beverly Hills 90210 on acid. And it was, a, they were all trippy films, but they were all about, you know, kind of the complex things that people, you know, that, that teenagers deal with, with their hormones and their sexuality and, and their place in the world and finding some kind of meaning. So it was, they were really good. I recommend them. Uh, he, one of the uh, earlier movies he did was uh, The Living End. And I had to like special order that from England in like 1997 to, <laughs> to get it on VHS. You know, a uh, very cool story about two people who were on a who both have been diagnosed with HIV, but uh, one is trying to live with it and the other one is just trying to die. You know, it has just gone full chaos agent. Yeah, and really cool story. But after that, he did a film called Splendor, and he got widely panned for the film, and then we've only seen him just a little bit since then. You know. And I've noticed that's kind of the way a lot of people do. Is they, you know, once they they feel like they're kind of they're starting to flounder, they take some time off and they say, "Well, I'm gonna do. I'm only gonna do a movie every three or five years." So people, you know, basically by the time the new one comes out, the older ones are have slipped out of people's memory. So it's. Oh, hey, this person is doing something again. Great, let's see it. And it's like, even if it's bad, it's like, well, it's another one of theirs. So it automatically kind of gets a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost. Like, even oh, yeah, if you remember that last movie. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, and when we were, when we were looking it up, we did find a, a, a trailer for one film, The Mysterious Skin, that he did with Joseph Gordon Levitt. And apparently it was an official selection at Cannes and stuff like that. So maybe him only showing up every now and then is good. Um, it's 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 like his artistic direction was so strange that he got relegated to TV writing and production and stuff like that. Okay, uh, rapid fire round. Um, let's look at a let's let's kind of we're 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 getting towards the end of the thing. And there's so many to talk about. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola, Godfather. Um, awesome movie. Also did Godfather Three. Terrible movie. Jack. Fun, but not great. Uh, and, um, let's see here. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. We mentioned him earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Spielberg did his one of his last films. Uh, AI. 2001, Space Odyssey. Very well received, very well enjoyed, very, you know, very artistic. Um, he also did The Shining. Mm -hmm. uh, with Jack... Uh, with Jack Nicholson. Yes, yeah. And um, Shirley Duvall. Yeah. Um, uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut. I think that's the movie that got Tom uh, Cruise and Nicole Kidman to get divorced. Probably. <laughs> um, there was also uh, Clockwork Orange, which was kind of one of those... Some people loved it, some people hated it, because he took the story and... He took the novel and chopped off the last... The redemption half of the story. And just left this left this character as just... Still kind of mad. Not reformed. Yeah, well, kind of reformed, just, you know, not redeemed. He didn't learn anything. He's forced into re he's forced into rehab. He is mm -hmm. rehabilitated. He can't do violence, but he hasn't he hasn't faced a, he hasn't redeemed himself and been forgiven. He's still very Brock Turner in that way. Yeah, very much so. Um so there's a few there's a few add-ons. I mean, like I said, we could do we could do this for days. We could do this for days. We do in fact. So many directors that just went bad. But unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Okay. So after talking about it a little bit off camera, uh, I think next next week we're going to be looking at TV shows versus Netflix and YouTube shows. And there's a little bit of crossover there, but we're going to try to work on, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. We're going to kind of look at the benefits of doing TV versus the benefits of doing online shows mm -hmm. and not doing, not broadcasting them. And YouTube stuff like this. So if you have any recommendations or any points that you'd like to bring up as far as this show, by all means, leave us a comment, uh, send us a tweet, send us a comment on our Facebook page. We're out there. Um, if you have any any comparisons or ideas for the TV versus Netflix and YouTube, again, 
Leave us a comment. Let us know. We'll make sure to bring it up. Tell us about the directors that uh, you thought went bad or directors that we mentioned that you think are just, you know, above, above reproach. <laughs> As always, thank you very much for watching. And stay tuned for more from Olaf Productions and The American Machine. We'll see you next time. You wanna see Cheerio. some crazy and all so lazy that you should meet me and my friends. Oh, Even though we got no money, yeah. 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 everything started with the them just, just like Ooh. Did you forget we're having Deirdre's birthday party? You went down. Tomorrow, just this, ladies and gentlemen, is an Atari 5200. I've never actually played one.